Hello, good people. Today we have an interesting magazine by the PCRM, the Physician, Physicians for Concerned Medicine. Uh, this is a, 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 an organization that is trying to get people healthy by, by getting people on a more plant-based diet nutritionally. In other words, they should, people should get their, their nutrients, their nutrition from plant-based grains, legumes, grains like uh, buckwheat and uh, legumes such as beans, uh, the chickpeas. This is very, uh, this is very good for people. And uh, so we have various articles. There's an article uh, on Russell Simmons how his, what he has in mind, what he would like to do for people to get them more well nutritionally. Then there's on, uh, then there's on the, the American Indian community on helping them reverse diabetes and uh, by a plant-based diet. There's a lot of things to look at. Let's take a look at it right now. Let's get things set up over here. One minute. Okay. So, this is Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons Prescription for the SNAP Program. This is, the magazine here is uh, Good Medicine, published by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. That's uh, summer 2017. Here, let's get a, a better lighting. The potential of SNAP. SNAP is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. This is very good. This here. Legumes lower diabetes risk. Legumes help lower risk for type 2 diabetes and according to a study published in Clinical Nutrition. Researchers followed the consumption of various legumes for 3,349 3, participants from the Prevención con Deleta Mediterránea Premed study and recorded diabetes incidence rates. Those who consumed the most legumes, including lentils, lentils chickpeas and peas had a lower risk for diabetes compared compared with those who consumed the least amount of legumes this here is the uh, sightings that, that, that for the study let's take a look at this now healthy gut protects cancer healthy gut protects against colorectal cancer high fiber diets that include whole grains influence gut bacteria and lower risk for colorectal cancer, according to a study published in JAMA Oncology. Researchers followed diets and cancer rates in more than 170,000 participants from the Nurses' Health Study and the Health Professionals' Follow-Up Study. Those who consumed high-fiber diets lowered the presence of specific disease causing bacteria in their guts and lowered their cancer risk as a result compared with those who did not follow the same type of diet. So, so high fiber diets that means it includes whole grains that it includes whole grains. Here these are the uh, the notes on it that can be looked up. This here is the this is the main the main uh, article, let's take a look at this. Healthier foods, healthier people. Here we go.
if SNAP focused solely on healthful vegetables, fruits, grains, and beans, not giving a penny for candy, meat, cheese, and greasy, greasy snack foods, retailers would have a huge incentive to stock healthful foods in every neighborhood in America. We'd have a shot at ending food deserts and ending the health inequities that are taking so many lives today. That's what Russell Simmons, Physicians Committee supporter, wellness enthusiast, and the mastermind behind Def Jam Records and Rush Communications recently said about the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps, in a commentary for U.S. News and World Report titled, SNAP is Hurting the Poor. The Physicians Committee has been working for years on a plan to do exactly what Simmons suggested. Unveiled in a special supplement of the American Journal of Preventive Medicine, edited by Physicians Committee President Neil Bernard, MD, and Yale University's David Katz, MD, the Healthy Staples Program would give the 43 million Americans who rely on SNAP greater access to healthful plant-based foods that can help them fight the diet-related diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and heart disease that disproportionately affect them. SNAP Snapshot. The SNAP program, which is administered by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uses about $70 million annually to to provide 43 million Americans living at or below 130% of the poverty level with electronic benefits to purchase food. Half of SNAP participants are children and teens. SNAP benefits can be used to purchase any food item except for hot and prepared entrees, alcoholic beverages, and vitamins. 55% of SNAP benefits are used for meats sweetened beverages, prepared foods, and desserts, cheese, salty snacks, candy, and sugar, while just 24% are spent on fruits and vegetables, grains, nuts, beans, seeds, and spices. So in other words, 55% our, uh, of SNAP benefits are used for the unhealthy items, meats, sweetened beverages, prepared foods, and desserts, cho- uh, cheese, salty snacks, candy, and sugar, while just 24% are spent on fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, beans, seeds, and spices. The remainder is spent on other miscellaneous items. Poorer overall diet quality, a a diet high in meat and dairy products and other junk foods and low in fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes like the diet suggested by by these SNAP purchases contributes to, to the obesity, diabetes, and heart disease epidemics that plague all Americans and take an even greater toll on SNAP's participants. A 2015 USDA study compared SNAP participants with income eligible with income eligible non-participants and found that SNAP participants had fewer overall diet quality that SNAP participants had poorer overall diet quality and consumed more calories from solid fats added sugars soda and alcohol and consumed fewer vegetables and fruits. These nutritional differences were deemed responsible for the higher obesity rates among SNAP participants. Economically disadvantaged people like SNAP recipients are also 70% 
more likely to have type 2 diabetes and 19% more likely to have high blood pressure compared to higher income peers. Another study in the American Journal of Public Health found that SNAP participants have an increased risk of death from heart disease and three times the diabetes mortality rate when compared to income ineligible non-participants. Researchers also observed an increased risk for SNAP participants when compared to income eligible participants. Healthy staples. Why are SNAP participants at greater risk for these diseases? Quote, walk through any poor neighborhood and you'll see the reason, says Simmons. A U.S. News, in U.S. News and World Report, quote, grocery stores are few and far between. Food is sold at convenience shops, at convenience shops, and as a sideline in liquor in liquor in liquor stores and smoke shops they sell plenty of the wrong kind of foods and precious little healthful food what's patronizing is to think that poor people are somehow tantrum prone children who can't handle a program focused on nutritious and healthful foods russell simmons Dr. Bernard and Physicians Committee Director of Nutrition Education Susan Levin, MS, RD, CSSD, recently described a possible solution for this pro pro problem in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program's role in addressing nutrition-related health issues. The, that's the article. The supplement published in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine. Through their proposed Healthy Staples program, SNAP would only reimburse retailers for selling healthful foods. They would stop profiting from selling their customers disease-causing junk foods like beef jerky, Velveeta, and candy bars. SNAP retailers would instead offer a range of healthful plant-based food with preparation tips and easy meal ideas. Grains such as oatmeal, whole grain bread, pasta, and tortillas, fresh, frozen, or low-sodium low canned vegetables, dry or low-sodium canned beans, fresh, frozen, or canned fruit, and basic multiple vitamins. If SNAP benefits were to continue at current levels, the Healthy Staples Program could provide complete nutrition and considerably more abundant food compared with the current system. The difference in costs between the current SNAP system and the program based on healthy staples would have been, approximate, would have been approximately $26 billion in 2015. The extra savings could be used to expand the pro to expand the program or as incentives for purchasing disease fighting foods healthier food healthier people walk through any poor neighborhood neighborhoods grocery stores are few and far between food is sold at food is sold at convenience shops and as a sideline in liquor stores and smoke shops. They sell plenty of the wrong kind of foods and precious little healthful, healthful food. So the plan would be to incentivize sellers to sell healthy foods, healthy plant-based foods, and not the unhealthy foods such as candy bars and uh, salty snacks salty and sugar laden snacks so that would help that would help a lot of people and people would soon soon get to like these uh, healthier health promoting foods welcome 
new food for life instructors. Congratulations to the, these are the new food for life instructors all over here. Congratulations to the Physicians Committee, 26 new food for life instructors and educational alliance partners from China, Ireland, Hawaii, and beyond, who completed an intensive three-day training program at the Physicians Committee, Committee's Washington, D.C. headquarters in May. The Food for Life program now has 245 instructors in 43 states, 19 instructors in 11 countries outside the United States, and 27 educational alliance partners, plus 67 certified through our Salad Master Partnership. The Food for Life programs, the Food for Life program designed by physicians, nurses, and registered dietitians offers cancer, diabetes, weight management, employee wellness, and children's nutrition classes that focus on the life-saving effects of healthful eating. Each class that focus on the life-saving effects of healthful eating, each class includes information about how foods and nutrients work to promote health, along with cooking demonstrations of, a, of simple and nutritious recipes that can be recreated easily at home. So these are the new instructors. These are the new instructors for Food for Life. They, they, completed, they completed a three-day intensive course, and now they're instructors, and they're going to help people in their helping them to have a better diet to help promote their health. Oh, here's another article, Defeating, Defeating Diabetes, in Native American communities. Let's see how this is. With less light. Defeating diabetes in Native American communities. Native Food for Life Diabetes Prevention Leadership Workshop held in partnership with the Institute of American Indian Arts March 22nd to 24th, 2017, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Here are some other pictures in this article. Native Americans have the highest prevalence of diabetes among all U.S. racial and ethnic groups. This spring, Carolyn Trapp, DNP, ANP, BC, CDF, Director of Diabetes Education and Care for the Physicians Committee, continued her, her outreach helping Native American communities fight diabetes with a plant-based diet. On March 22nd to 24th, 2017, the Physicians Committee hosted the Native Food for Life Diabetes Prevention Program Leadership Academy in partnership with the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The program was provided to diabetes educators of the Navajo Nation and the eight northern pueblos of New Mexico. This year's workshop expanded the diabetes educators previous training on helping patients eat more plant-based foods and avoid unhealthful animal products. Physicians Committee staff and the Navajo Nation volunteers also, also distributed power plate literature at the gathering of the nations on April 22nd 20 to 29 and on May 18th to 20th. The Navajo Nation collaborated on the, the, on the plant-based prevention of disease, PPOD conference, with the Physicians Committee co-sponsors, Navajo Nation Vice President Jonathan Nez gave opening remarks, remarks at PPOD after leading a pre-conference 5K run with vegan ultra-marathoner champion Scott Jurek, 
ultra marathon champion Scott Jurek. Let's take a look at some of the pictures here. Power plate. Physicians, committee, staff, and Navajo Nation volunteers at the Gathering of Nations. Vegan food at the Native Food for Life Diabetes Prevention Leadership Workshop. And here, this is Navajo Nation Vice President Jonathan Nez, Miss Navajo Nation 2017, Rhonda Joe, and Vegan Ultra Marathoner Scott Jurek. Here's other, there are other various articles that are in this magazine. Nurses experience benefits of plant-based diets. We have that. 15 credits for physicians, dietitians, and nurses. There's also in the end of the, at the, uh, the, the back of the magazine, there's this prof prof physician profile. Preventing our top 15 killers by Michael Greger, MD, FAS, CLM. How big is nutrition's role in the top causes of death? It tells you what he talks about. Here we, we'll have this so you can read this. We'll see what else. Here, power plate tote bag. Share the Physicians Committee's revolutionary power plate with this bag. It's $5. So you can have a, you can get yourself a power plate tote bag. That's very good. Here, this is where you can look all these things up. Very good to get this magazine. And this way you'll be able, you'll be on your way to uh, a more healthful diet and you can learn about the events that are going on that they sponsor. Okay, so in the end, in, in the interest of, uh, I'll make this up. We'll make this a little bit of a shorter video today. So, so thank you very much. Oh, don't have my glasses. All right. So anyway, in the interest of making this a shorter video today, we'll, we'll end here. And thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. And we hope to see you again. Take care.